Freddie Medfield. Welcome to the newest edition of What's Happening at the Center. Um, I'm, this is Ann Thompson. And I'm temporarily filling in for Jack Peterson, who is uh, recovering. We hope very well. We give our best wishes to Jack. The guest, of course, you all know is Roberta Lynch, who's head of the center in Medfield. And she's going to give us a brief synopsis of the 16 years that she's been doing this job to help a lot of us. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's nice to be with you. And um, so I brought something that um, I wrote when I first started at the FAF Center. And um, it's kind of interesting. I've, I saved it because, uh, you know, it had what my goals were and how I was going to achieve the goals. And the first, um, the first goal when I got to uh, the FAF Center, and actually it was 2001 that I started, um, was to increase programs. And if you remember, the FAF Center was, uh, I think it's like a 600 square foot room, and we started increasing our programs. I mean, we started our yoga program uh, in the FAF Center space with Susan Dahl. She came in with a video to start off with, and then uh, eventually got her certification in yoga, and here we are today at the center, and she's there on Tuesdays with Bat Yoga and Chair Yoga. So we increased our programs, thinking that if we increased programs, and that we would, increased participation, which we did. Our participation um, grew with the activities and, and then we uh, were able to identify a need and the need was that we needed more space. And um, this is the, uh, as we talked on our way over, this is the, the paper or the flip chart that I used when I was giving a presentation to the original Adult Center Study Committee and told them uh, that th these were my goals and, and kind of generate a, a, a philosophy or an environment of senior wellness, which now might um, is similar to the word um, healthy aging. <laughs> and uh, so, and how, how are we going to do that? How was I going to do that? It was with ideas, generating ideas for programs, um, enthusiasm, which, um, you know, I, I love what I do and have since day one. Uh, energy, you know, you gotta have the energy to, to be involved and plan programs and and respect respect for the population that you you're working with and uh, indeed everyone at the senior center or the center at Medfield now uh, loves what they do and certainly all respect who we work for um, and then the ways uh, that we were going to do that is to meet the physical needs emotional needs the social needs and oftentimes the spiritual needs of individuals and and through this whole flip chart that you see here uh, this is how uh, the Council on Aging started when when I uh, took the position back in August of 2001 and you know when you look at some of the programs there and one of the things that jumps out at me way back when in 2001 I have adult daycare um, which uh, Finally, in 2012, we started through a grant, we started the Adult Respite Care Program, and uh, we've had our birthday program going on for, I think we're going on our fifth year, and um, you know, we have all our uh, wellness programs, our VNAs coming in, the Natick VNA, the Walpole VNA, we have hearing screenings, we uh, obviously have our health room. Um, one of the social things that I never thought of that we'd have is our hair salon and nail salon. Um, which is wonderful to offer to people and you know we've just uh, from the FAF Center days we've just we've just come a long way. You've grown and you've blossomed though. We've Not grown. just grown, you've definitely blossomed. Yeah it's really uh, it's it's been wonderful and you know the the truth is that um, obviously we we are going to be looking for some money at town meeting to um, develop plans for future expansion because with the the way people are aging in Medfield and um, you know people are living longer and our respite program has just uh, been so successful that I see more space at the center uh, a real need for the future so we're beginning to look at that and our friends group is going to start to fundraise um, if we can get if we can get money from the town to plan to, to have an idea of what uh, we can build for our for our future needs um, that would be wonderful so we're, we're working in that direction and what particular needs are you aiming for so uh, particularly it is the respite program which I only see that program um, growing because of the number of people that are growing older I mean we have so many people that are in their 90s that are participating 80s 
Um, we have a lot of families that uh, moms and dads are moving in with them, and, and it's much better for them to be at the center. If they can be independent, great. Mm -hmm. If they can't be independent, they might need somebody to just kind of help them along. So, so that's one. Uh, that's the major need. Well, is I've told you before, if I win mega bucks, you're not going to have to ask the town for that money. I know, and I'm, I'm waiting for that, uh, yeah. that lottery. Mike Sullivan laughs at me all the time because I have a bucket list of different things in town that I like to yeah. do. And that would, uh, to increase that program to me would be dynamite. I've never needed it myself. I've been very lucky. And as far as I know, nobody in my family has. Yeah. But it breaks my heart when I see some of the people in that program that I knew well and who no longer know yeah. who people are. And it's, mm -hmm. and I feel, I don't know whether I feel worse for the person in the program or the person who has to take them home and care for them. Yeah, and I, I hear what you're saying and I look at it um, a little different and I think we've had this conversation. I am hap I, I'm happy that they're able to come, uh, people are able to come to the center if they need a little support. Absolutely. Get them out of the house. There's nothing worse than being, well we all know this from this winter, being stuck in your house for a long period of time, being alone, it, it, the walls cave in, it, it's miserable. And if you can get people out, and you know what's interesting, Ann, is when we had those real snowy days on Tuesdays and Thursdays, the people that came to the center were our club members, mm -hmm. that the caregivers were bringing their loved one in, and so they could have, you know, stimulation, activity, conversation, um, and then the caregiver could go off and have a, have some time to themselves. And that's very important. So important. it's very hard to be a caregiver. Yeah. So that's that's one of our biggest needs is more space for that program because they're in our um, old computer room, which was reconverted into the the uh, club room for the program. The other one is another classroom. Um, when we talk about healthy aging, one of the major focuses for healthy, age, healthy aging is exercise. And we have our exercise room, which is great. We had to um, split up our exor exercise for life classes because it was just so big and it was unsafe. So we want another classroom that can be multi-purpose for maybe another exercise class. Not everybody likes to do Tai Chi. Not everybody likes to do uh, Zumba. So mm -hmm. you need to have diversion in your classes. And the other thing that I think is really important when you talk about aging, balance, bone loss, is um, weight training. And I would also like to have an exercise room that has equipment, a couple of treadmills, a couple of ellipt ellipticals, free weights, that people can go in and, and use that area to, to build their muscle mass and their, their bones, make That's their bones idea. stronger. Great Those idea. are my three areas that um, we're looking for. And again, this is for the future because um, there's about 25, almost 2,600 people 60 years and older in Medfield now. And the 50 uh, to 60 population is about, oh, I can't remember, is about similar to that, about 25, 2,600. So, you know, that's a big chunk of the yes. population in Medfield that's, that's aging. And it's a good thing to age because that means we're here. <laughs> it's great. Better than the alternative, exactly. right? Exactly. That's what they always so, say. So that's our, that's our, mm -hmm. um, that's my, the Council on Aging Board um, have recognized a need to be proactive. And at least if we knew what we were fundraising for, if we had an idea what it might cost or what it would look like, that would be really helpful to uh, folks so that they know what they're going to be working for too. So. Yeah, it would be great. Yeah, I, I'm keeping my fingers crossed. I mean, we do really good work uh, at the Council on Aging, and um, this has been a challenging winter for everyone. <laughs> uh, been challenging for us because we have, you know, had to deal with a lot of homes with leaks and uh, getting people to shovel off decks and roofs and that sort of thing. But you know, we've we've handled it. Wow, so. it is amazing. Yeah, I think one of my favorite activities activities up there are the supper clubs. Oh, the supper clubs are great. And But you know what? February is a bust for, <laughs> for everybody. You can't do anything in February this year. It's awful. Next year will be better. Next year will be better, yeah. But we have our big, in March, we have February, uh, March 14th, we have our St. Patty's Day dinner. Uh, so that'll be fun. That's a Saturday. So um, we're looking forward to that. We have a good number of people that have signed up. So that should be fun. I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. I was surprised at the last supper club there were at least as many men as women. Yes. And it used to be the reverse. It used to be almost all women. All and now women. the men are coming mm -hmm. and it's great. Mm -hmm. It's $6 for dinner. It's a dollar for donation for any drink you have. Yep. Um, 
you don't have to clean up, you don't have to set up. Right. <laughs> you just have to be nice and not not sneer or make any awful remarks. Yes. But it's it's a great social opportunity. I always try and it sit with nice. different people. Yes. And it's amazing the people you can still meet up there at, at our age. Absolutely. Still meet them. And it's so important to to meet those people and have that social interaction with them. It really is. You know, everybody needs to have that. Especially for those of us that live alone now. Of course. I think it makes a big, makes a big difference. Of course. The senior yeah. bus is also a wonderful thing. My sister who lives in Buffalo in her town, they do not have any bus. Mm -hmm. And she's lucky she still drives, but um, her husband's not been well and she said they don't have any senior bus service. Right. They have activities and they have a center, but, but no, no way to get there. Mm -hmm. And it's funny when you talk about the, back when I started, one of the first projects that um, uh, we did was worked with our friends group and the Medfield Foundation and fundraised for the large 14 passenger bus mm -hmm. which is actually now used by the school department. Um, so that was uh, one of the things that I recognize that transportation is so important for people. You know you need to get where you need to go. I just know and I've said this before to Jack when you know having doing the interviews that when I'm without my car because it's being serviced I climb the walls. Like, how am I going to get anywhere? What am I going to do? So imagine that every day, you know, when yeah. somebody decides to give up their license or for some reason can't drive. So transportation is the most important program we can offer. In fact, when you call the center um, and you put in your ride request, you press one for transportation because that is the most important program we offer. Well, and that's uh, most heavily used. It is used more and more, oh, the transportation. Wow. It's just, um, well, of course, you know Bill Party, our transportation uh, coordinator. He's just, he's just fabulous. I mean, he is welcoming and he's safe driver and does a great job. Yeah, well, a group of us have a little bet going on. Can we ever find a time when he is either cranky or lazy? Right. And haven't seen either one yet. <laughs> no, I don't think I have either. And in fact, his four years at the center is coming up in March because he started four years ago right around the time that there was going to be the town election and um, and that's how I remember that because the town election will be coming up in March. At last Monday in March? Yeah. Yep. Town meeting the last Monday in April. Yep. Right. right. And you're going to have an article on the town meeting warrant, huh? Yes, we are. Let's see how that all goes. Well, you know, um, I know that people, when we were building the building, people, some people said, oh, I'm not going to go, I'm not going to use the center. They maybe weren't even in favor of it, maybe didn't even vote for it, but now I hear people say, yeah, you know, I'm so glad this center's here. So it's just really planning for the future, just, you know, just like the schools plan for their future, um, and, and that's what we're doing. And, you know, it's just at least letting it people know in the community that there is a need. We think there's a need and certainly if you come down and take a few days, have a few days with us, participate with us, you'll see exactly what goes on at the center too. Yeah, I voted for it with some enthusiasm, as you probably know. Yep. Partly I had to because my daughter-in-law was chairman of the study committee. Right, right. <laughs> I, I, gave, I showed her this way back when. And Bob Lutman, you mentioned also yep. for, from, yep. the, from the group that was working yep. for it. But I never thought I'd use it. I was working full time. Mm -hmm. I could drive until a few years ago. Yep. So I never thought I, w I was going to get older, but I was never going to get old. I was never going right. to need this right. kind of service. Right. And now I find I do. And I, I, it's wonderful that it's there. Yeah, I, I think so. And, and you know, um, sometimes all our rooms are booked and oftentimes our friends group has to have their meeting out in the foyer, um, it, which is, that's great, that's exciting. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm like thrilled. Every room is taken because of some program, which is wonderful and that's the way it should be. Absolutely. You know? um, we've even thought of putting another partition in the hall so we could let, kind of oh, divide yeah. that and make that, but uh, I think the cost of a partition would probably I'd rather put you know put that towards future expansion or something you know, but and your other staff members do you want to? Absolutely, I can. Yep. So um, and Susan. Susan. Yep. Now Susan Bernstein, she is a volunteer coordinator, and she has arranged for I'm going to say close to 50 families uh, to have a volunteer student shovel out their walkways and mailboxes and. Um, con Congratulations to her for uh, getting all those volunteers and a uh, big thank you to all the, the youth volunteer who are doing the shoveling for the seniors in town. That's absolutely a remarkable program. Um, and uh, you know, if, if anyone's listening, 
in March 25th, we're having a pizza and bingo night for all our teen volunteers oh, great to idea. come in to say thank you. Um, last year we planned it in May, and that's just not a good time for, not kids, for kids because no. <laughs> so this time we're we're on it, and it's uh, March 25th in the evening, I don't know, 5 to 7.30 or something, for the kids to come down. Let us say thank you to them. That is a terrific and, idea. Uh, and just have a, a fun evening, yeah. Because some of them probably don't even know who the rest of them are. <laughs> right, exactly, yeah. So, um, so, and Susan not only, not only does the snow shoveling, she does the, uh, well, she does everything uh, that I put on her plate, but also <laughs> she does the uh, medical ride program. So she's the one who arranges a volunteer to pick you up at your home, drive you to your doctor's appointment, bring you back home. Wow. Um, and that's that's a, a great program. Yeah. And maybe years ago, you remember, I think Medfield had the fish program. Yes, I used to drive for fish. Yeah, right. So uh, similar to that, um, but, uh, it, you know, she does a great job at that. My husband did a lot of those volunteer drives. Mm -hmm. Yes, he, he did. It. He enjoyed it. Yep, yes, he did. And then Cheryl Lavalley is our outreach worker. She's a licensed social worker, and uh, when... Let's see, there, Susan and Cheryl actually started on the same day, if you can imagine, uh, October 16th. It was five years uh, this past October that they've been with the center. And um, so when Cheryl started, she was at 15 hours a week. And um, I can't imagine her at 15 hours a week now. Uh, she, <laughs> we finally got her up to full-time status, and I've never seen anybody busier than Cheryl, um, making home visits, um, you know, working with protect, protective service cases, um, facilitating the low vision support group, the caregiver support group. Um, just amazing what, what the staff at the COA does. That's terrific. You've yeah. all, and you work well together. And we work well together. It looks like it. Yeah, yeah, it's great. And Bob Bel Belvance has to be the most enthusiastic volunteer I have ever seen in my life. Oh, <laughs> yes, absolutely. He is, he's there all the time, and he's always doing chores or doing something yes. for somebody else. It's, yeah. And it's yeah. a great opportunity for other people. You know, when you, think, uh, you talk about volunteers, um, we have over 120 volunteers. Um, some of them are on tax work off. Some of them are just volunteers because they want to give back to the community, mm -hmm. um, and it's wonderful. They do so many different. Think of all the ladies at the reception desk. Those are all volunteers that mm -hmm. come in and sit there, you know, Monday through Friday, answering the phones, kind of uh, troubleshooting when people come in. Um, and it's just the volunteers are great. They they help keep the the whole center running. So your yeah. dream for the future is make it a little bit bigger. Make it a little expand, bigger. Expand the, care, the caregiver program. Absolutely. Which I fully understand. Any other expansion needs you see in the future? Five, 10, 15 years down the road? Well, I'm only here for about eight more years. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna retire? Well, sure, doesn't everybody? Why? No, I didn't. Oh, no? Really? I was 75 when I retired full time, 79 when I finished. Oh Part -time. my, well, maybe you have more energy than I do. I had no pension either. <laughs> right. No, it isn't that. I had a lot of energy, and well, I like being busy. Yeah. I, I actually think, though, um, I've observed many COAs over the years, and I really think that um, at a certain point in this position, this is my personal okay. feeling, this is uh, that at a certain point in the position, you're working with senior citizens, and I think when you actually you know, become that senior citizen, I think that it, it's time to maybe hmm. step down and let that younger, energetic, new ideas take over. I mean, that's my personal I would never have thought of that, but you were what, about 40 when you started. Yep, yep. I never thought about that. So that's how I feel. Um, I would never want to get stale in my position, you know, just kind of same old, same old, try mm -hmm. to, you know, mix it up a bit. But I think at a certain age that, you know, it's time to, because now you're not working with people older than you, you're working with your peers. Yeah, okay. And, and so that's my feeling, totally my feeling. And so, yes, so I say uh, eight more years, and then, you know, you know, when you work for a municipality, you have to think of the pension and that sort of mm -hmm. thing. So, um, yeah. But I, so, I, I, but I, the future I, plans. <laughs> so the future plans is what I have in mind now. Now, if somebody else comes in and has uh, other plans after I leave, then, you know, that's that's 
their call, not mine. Of course, it will change as the de demographics change, of as course. more people become 60, uh, 65 and over, and of maybe course. some years will be fewer. It, yeah. Who knows? Yeah, but you know what? We just keep, we just keep going up with this, the senior population. But the birth rates are down so much slower that it's, it's interesting to see what it'll be in 20 or 30 years, what oh, the that's true. senior climate will be. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And I won't be here. <laughs> you might be, but I'm not going to be here. <laughs> well. Yeah, anything else you want to add this week on happenings at um, the center? No, I mean, I think we really did. I, I, this was great to go through, you know, where we were and where we are and where we want to be. So I really appreciate the opportunity to talk about that. It's great. Just tell people that uh, the March newsletter is out. I'm not going to go through them all, but I plan some day trips between uh, May, April, May, June, July, August, September, October. We have some day trips planned. Um, and they're listed through August in the March newsletter, and then in April I'll do the uh, fall trips that I have planned. But, you know, there's always something going on at the Senior Center, so um, we try to get the newsletter online on the Friends, the Fosse website, um, and obviously these are around town. Jackie Iafola, one of my best volunteers, um, will bring the newsletters around to the banks and the town hall mm -hmm. and, you know, um, so definitely pick one up and see what we're what's happening. Okay, well thanks Roberta. We'll see you back in a month or so. Okay, perfect. Appreciate it very much. Thank you, Ann. And thanks for Jack for starting the whole thing in the first place. <laughs>